This is a dream that I had in Providence, Rhode Island, when I was lying on my brother's futon guest bed. I had a little raspberry-colored mushroom phallus growing out of my forehead. Nancy Campbell told me to cover it over with my hair. I went to a cheese store to buy cheese. I went to that store often because Dusty Hoffman worked there. I asked Dusty for a half a pound of Fontina and then could not think of what it was I wanted next. It wasn't that I was not interested in cheese, but I was more interested in why a famous movie star would be working in a cheese store. <laughs> he asked me if I'd like to try some thin sliced cheddar and he showed me a very nice cheddar that was sliced in thin sheets and I said, that looks good, I'll take some. Just before leaving the store, I stopped and sat down, I think I was wearing sunglasses, and asked him why he wasn't acting anymore. Why was he working in a cheese store? He told me it was because his mother had lupus disease. <laughs> then he said he wanted to show me something and we went for a walk together. He led me to a basement of a building and then disappeared and I found that I was all alone going down into this basement and I realized that I was entering a lupus colony. <laughs> all the people were grossly crippled. Some only had the top half of their bodies left which were hanging in harnesses. Others were missing fingers. I was afraid I would catch this disease even though Dusty had told me that it was inherited in the genes. A woman passed by me and breathed in my ear. I got afraid. She was a kind of freak. I looked down and saw that she had white feathers growing out of the palms of her hands. The, the, the second uh, written part is a story that was told to me in, in Mykonos by a woman named Tanya. Uh, she was about 22 years old, would have been perfect material for the cover of Stern magazine. She was with her boyfriend, Herbertos, who is one of the most beautiful, innocent men I've ever met, the kind of innocence that you can't say anything about. Doesn't make for good stories. Then there was another man that was hanging out with us named Colin Stone, who had invented the Garden Gnome, and had made $30 million on the Garden Gnome. And uh, he was down there in his Lear jet, because he had just been uh, put in prison for uh, some sort of... Um, uh, illegal activity around the garden gnomes. And then there was a, one other person that was at the table uh, from Australia who was an IBM operator. Uh, he featured himself kind of an Oscar Wilde uh, figure. Um, I don't know why. The only story he told that I liked was that um, he told that someone stole a garden gnome from a lawn in Australia and took it around the world. <laughs> Sent postcards back to the owner saying, I had a lovely time in the Fiji Islands. After three months, the gnome appeared back on the lawn with luggage, little suitcases, miniature clothing. Anyway, Tanya told me this story. This was uh, told me, to, uh, Mahler's Fifth Symphony was playing in the background. It's the best, best part of this bar, the Castro. They played classical music while you drank Uzo and Seven Up. This was told to me uh, while Mahler's Fifth Symphony was playing in the background. May I speak with you? Tanya whispered in my ear. I cannot give my heart to one man. Herbertos loves me and has given his entire self. He lives for me. Last night I rejected him and he broke down and cried. He said he was going to kill himself. I like falling in love. I like the feeling of the passion. I like lying on my bed at night and not being able to sleep or eat because I am thinking all the time of my new lover. I am thinking of his eyes. May I tell you briefly of my father? He is an architect and works very hard. At 39 years old, he had his first heart attack, and now he expects another one any day, and this one will be fatal. <laughs> I am his only daughter, and he adores me. People say his whole being lights up whenever he sees me. He will do anything for me. He is sure that the USSR will invade Germany soon. He predicted that they would invade Afghanistan, and they did. The German economy is in a state of collapse, and our chancellor is about to resign because of this. My father desperately wants me to leave Germany before it is too late, but I can't. I am a German. My father gets very depressed about this. He pleads with me. 
He was going to help with the building of a collective bomb shelter, like the ones they have, the Swiss have, and they have so many of these shelters, you know. But when he found out that it was forbidden to bring dogs into these shelters, he said, what's the use? Thank you.